time is it? It's time to get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another exciting afternoon of Organic Chemistry Chem 170 with your host, me, Dr. White. Now, important information, announcements, and information too. After class today, within about 10 minutes, I will send out an email, hold on, dirty glasses. But I'll send out an email. Where's my glass cleaner? Time out for, for those who wear glasses, get the microfiber towels from Walmart. They're dirt cheap and they do a great job of cleaning. Now I'm already sorry about that. All right, important announcement. About within 10 minutes after I end class today, and we'll be ending early, and I'll explain why in a little while, I will send out an email to you with the password for test number one. If you haven't done already, uh, after class, download it from the assignment area Black uh, Farm School of D2L, and it's a PDF file. The password, and it says it in the email, is all lowercase. It will say it in the email, but just to remind you, the password is all lowercase. When I started doing passwords like this, I decided, no, I don't want to do it. I could, you know, some upper and lower that would cause more problems for the student, which means more problems for Dr. White. You will have until tomorrow morning, I think either 10 or 11 a.m., to take test number one and upload your answers, just like you've been doing with the labs to the assignment area of D2L. I promise by Sunday, 1 p.m., I will have the scores for your test number one in D2L. Once I do post it, I will send out an email to that effect. <clears throat> and within a couple hours after that, I'll also send out individually to each one of you your test score points for each answer you put on test number one. Like it's problem one, there's, or let's say problem five, there's five parts, A, B, C, D, and E. I will give you the email, we'll have the points for five A, B, C, and D. All right, next Monday in lecture, I will go through all the answers for test number one. I do that for all the tests and I will remove that from the video, cut it out. I have a video editor, quite good one. But if you can't make it to the Zoom meeting, when I do that, you're always welcome to come to my office hours. Or if you're working then, we'll work out something where I can go through the answers. Also, uh, I've said many times already this semester, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And anything I grade, you can always ask me, why did I get those points? That's a fair question in my book. I have no problem answering why I gave so many points for a question. Now, unfortunately in organic, it's hard to give partial credit. It's either right or wrong, uh, but sometimes I'll do it. But for nomenclature, if the root name is wrong, the whole thing is wrong. You mess up on the numbering, and usually there are three points. I'll give you one out of three. I'm not going to go through the headache of doing half points. This is too much of a headache. But students do good on my test, so I don't feel guilty about that. I don't feel guilty about a lot of things, because I shouldn't. All right. Now, the other thing I do want to mention is, if we were face-to-face -face in the summer at ECC, and today I'm giving a test, what I would normally do is give the test first, take a break, then spend the rest of the time lecturing. However, I think it works better now. I'll lecture for a little while, we'll end way early, and then you get to take the test. Just like in real life, I would not spend the whole time while you're taking a test, I'm not gonna be lecturing. Does it make sense? <laughs> Which is why I don't do it. Uh, so, does anybody have any questions? All right, now I happen to look at the syllabus and boy, we're getting ahead of ourselves. And part of the reason is I stole some time during the lab where labs 
are usually 50 minute lecture lab is goodbye. Why well, a couple of labs, especially since the July 5th is coming up, which is a holiday for ECC and everybody else, because of the long July 4th weekend, we're ahead of ourselves. So I'm gonna go for a while today lecturing about ketones and then we'll, I'll let you go and you can go, I'll send out the password and you take test number one. All right, um, anything else? Oh, uh, this last couple of days I got hammered with a lot of stuff and it happens sometimes in summer, even the fall and spring. So I got a little behind my labs. Uh, a couple hours ago, about an hour or two ago, I posted uh, lab three lab scores. And by tomorrow morning, I should have lab number four, the one you handed it on Tuesday, I mean, Monday done. And I'll also start working on the one you should have handed in yesterday. So I'm getting up to speed and, you know, or actually, I think the one you handed in uh, Wednesday, I'll have done whatever. By the end of the week, I'll be caught up with the labs you should have been putting in. And with that, I better get to work. All right, we were talking about aldehydes and ketones. This won't be on the test. But I talked about benzaldehyde, cinnamaldehyde, taste and smell of cinnamon. I love my older sister AIDS with a passion. I don't know why, but we both like vanilla and I love raspberry, so raspberry ketone. This will never be on the test. Now, coming chapters, we'll be doing the following. One, how do you make that functional group? And two, how do you react it? And remember, these reactions allow us to make things that are used in your everyday life. So, oh, instant replay. You already learned this reaction, but let's go through it again. How do you make aldehydes and ketones? You, one way is to oxidize an alcohol. And if we take a primary alcohol, hold on while I turn on my tablet. You guys hear that noise when it tells me, oh, it's up and ready. All right, this, which I could also draw like this, is a primary alcohol. If you oxidize it, you get an aldehyde, which my software likes writing there. And I like writing like that, handwriting. And that's how you make an aldehyde. And now you know this is an aldehyde. And let's practice a couple of times doing that. Since I already gave you this reaction once before, I'll just give you an example. And why don't you do the following? What would be the organic product or products of the following three points each? Have you been telling your friends you've been doing organic chemistry and it's not that painful? Or anybody who goes to schools out of state, have you been telling your friends they should take me this fall. Because <laughs> I will be teaching it on uh, the internet totally just like this one. All right, don't forget when you're done, give me a thumbs up or some other high sign. I see one person gone. Oh, looks like everybody's gone. That was quick. 
let's take a look at this. Look at a molecule, look for what's different. What's not carbon, what's not hydrogen, what's not a carbon-carbon single bond? Oh, hydroxyl group, oxygen on a carbon. This is a primary alcohol. And we're oxidizing it. And what do you get? An aldehyde. Now, what's our R group? This. This is attached to this carbon, which is this carbon, which becomes this carbon. And therefore, do you break carbon carbon single bonds? No. So I have one, two, three, four across this methyl. Here's the carbon with the hydroxyl group, the alcohol, and it becomes a carbonyl. Remember, carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen. And don't forget, there's four bonds to carbon. So I can do this. And that's how you do it. Now, in test number two, unlike test one, instead of this one synthesis problem, because by now I think you've all lost your rookie organic chemistry student status, you're now getting to be a pro student, there'll be three synthesis problems. And the question is, what do you oxidize to make that molecule? Your turn. I see a couple people gone. Everybody's emoji working today? Or if you're on video, ah, they are. All right, how do you do this? You look for what's different. Ooh, oxygen. Double bond to carbon with the hydrogen and carbons, aldehyde. What do you oxidize to make an aldehyde? Oops, forgot the line there. Now it's official a primary alcohol. Remember the carbonyl carbon, this one, started out as this carbon of the alcohol. What's my R group? Here's this one. Therefore the R, oops. Let's do a better R circle. That's better. That's my R group. And therefore, notice there are four carbons here. I didn't add any carbons, so I better start out with four carbons. Notice this carbon here is this carbon, which is this carbon. So I can put this, and I know there are four bonds to carbon. So I can put in my hydrogens, and that's your answer. And that's oxidation of a primary alcohol to make an aldehyde. And when I was in grad school, I did a lot of research in aldehydes and I had to make some of them to do the research with them. And I would make get the alcohol, purchase it, and I'd oxidize it. I didn't do the ones you did. Oh, time for Dr. White to old friend time. This was an important aldehyde I made in graduate school. This is called a bicycle 222 octanone ring, which I'm not teaching in this class. Even a two semester, they don't teach that. But anyways, let's get back to your stuff. All right, now, primary alcohol oxidized aldehyde. Secondary alcohol, which you could also write like this. And remember R prime, just right here, and R just like X and Y in math. And when you oxidize it, 
you get a ketone. Then you can see how my software likes to not put carbons in every bend of the line. There's a carbon there or there. And oops, I made a mistake here. And you get a ketone. And so let's have some fun with it. This is a organic chemist lazy way of not drawing, quickly drawing a longer chain because of a bond angle, not really, but you get away doing that. We do that sometimes. What would be the product or product of following compound? And remember it's Thursday, so that means it's turn on your webcam if you'd like to make Dr. White happy. And when you're done, don't forget to let me know. All right, everybody done? I think so. Let's take a look at this. Look at a molecule, look for what's different. What's not carbon, what's not hydrogen. Ooh, an oxygen with a hydrogen on a carbon. And it's got two R groups. This is a secondary alcohol. When you oxidize it, you get a ketone. And this carbon becomes this carbon. So what's my R group? Doesn't matter what you call R and R prime. I'll do that. That's R prime. Here's my carbon with the hydroxyl group. What's attached to it? R group, R prime, because you don't break carbon, carbon single bonds, is still attached to it. And this carbon, which is this carbon, becomes this carbon which is double bonded to oxygen. And there you go. Oh, let's do another one. Here's one for you to try. What would be the organic product or products for the following reaction? And for all of you, thank you for handing in in time your signature sheet. I appreciate that. And don't forget, those of you who don't have your webcam on, give me the thumbs up or whatever other emoji you'd like to use when you're done. All right, let me get going. What's different? This is an easy chapter. Oxygen. And it's got a hydrogen on a carbon here. And what is this? Well, it's in a ring. Notice you have carbons here and here. This is a secondary alcohol. This so happens in a ring, R and R prime are connected together. And when you oxidize it, you get a ketone. And therefore, do you break carbon-carbon single bonds? No. So it's ever attached to this carbon right here will still be attached to this carbon. And that would be my methyl group on the ring and my ethyl group. 
and here's the carbon that's this carbon, and that's double bond to oxygen. Now, I've just done, I, I should say, I just exposed you or did to you, doesn't sound right. I just did to you, and I've been inoculating you all semester against the chemistry instructor's favorite trick on the test. How am I inoculating you? I'm happy you do a lot of them. And you put a big, scary molecule, and you don't know where to look and how to look at a molecule, that's big and scary. But if you look at it right, you say, oh, that's just a secondary alcohol, and I'm oxidizing it, nothing else changes. But that's the chemistry instructor's trick on the test. Oh, let's do more, one more. Dr. White's having a good time. And the question is, what would you oxidize to make that molecule? This is the fun part. This is synthesis. Any of you with um, Amazon accounts take care uh, advantage of Prime Day earlier in this week? I looked, everything I looked I wanted to buy was on sale, and I'm not an impulse buyer. <laughs> All my sisters would always get upset with me because it was something like a big purchase. I would always say, I'm going to let it sleep on it overnight. Why are you going to buy it? Buy it now. No, I want to think about it. Oh, they did so because they were both impulse buyers. So are. all right, let's take a look at it. I think everybody's de done. And what do we see that's different in this molecule? Oxygen, double bond to carbon. There's carbons here and here. What's that? A ketone. This so happens R and R prime are connect together. What do you oxidize to make a ketone? A secondary alcohol. This carbon becomes this carbon. Notice what we ended up with connect to that carbon you started with. So what does that mean? Here's the carbon with the carbonyl or uh, double bond oxygen. So I'm still gonna have my ring, still gonna have a methyl group here, isopropyl group here, And this carbon, which becomes this carbon, is this carbon, which is this carbon. So that's going to have a hydroxyl group. And that's how you do it. Now, let's talk about a very special reaction that's called Friedel Crafts. Acylation. Now, I'll never ask you what it is, but this attached to something is called an acyl group. And what you're going to do is put this acyl group on a benzene ring. And I, this is one of the rare times my software put in a circle. I might redraw it this way. And this molecule is called an acid chloride. And acid chlorides are very reactive intermediates. Unfortunately, this semester, I really don't have much time to talk about them other than something we'll do in the lab. But this is by the same people who did Friedel Crafts alkylation, but now you're gonna put on an acyl group. 
And what happens is you react benzene with the acid chloride, with aluminum trichloride, and here's my acyl group. And I put it on a benzene ring. And this is called an aromatic ketone. And why is this important? Because one of the R groups in a ketone is a benzene ring or aromatic ring. You could have stuff on there, but I'm not going to do that. And you also get uh, some inorganic stuff like the catalyst back. And this generates HCl also, the H from here and the chlorine here. But we're not worried about that. I'm an organic chemist. And I tell you, organic chemists are biased against other branches of chemistry. We're lazy too. So this is one of those special times. Well, look what we've done right here. Right here, we've made a carbon-carbon single bond from the carbonyl group to the benzene ring. It's very special, very rare, and very exciting. And the question is, what's the organic product or product for the following? I'll do this one and I'll let you have some fun too. And what do we have here? Oh, two different things, a benzene ring, that's different. And notice I have a carbonyl, this oxygen, and that carbonyl, I have a chlorine and an R group. This is called an acid chloride. And I'm reacting it with aluminum trichloride. And guess what? This is Friedel Crafts acylation. I'll put an acyl group on there, carbonyl and R. And the R comes from here. In our case, what's R? Methyl. So I will get here a benzene ring, carbonyl. And to that carbonyl, what's R? Methyl. This has a common name, it's called acetophenol. And that's how you do Friedel Crafts acylation. And notice I have made something very special, very rare a carbon carbon single bond. And it's your turn to have some fun. What would be the organic product or products for the following three points each? And when you're done, don't forget to give me whatever way you want to signify you're done. A couple people are done already, but take your time. Now it looks like everybody's washed their hands because I see clean thumbs. Oh, is that an awful joke? Remind me, don't ever say that again. All right, let's get going. What do we see that's different? Benzene ring, that's different. When you're doing a benzene ring, don't forget to put the lines or circle in there. What do we have here? Ooh, carbonyl with a chlorine in our group. That's an acid chloride. 
and we're reacting with aluminum trichloride. And what do you do? You get this aromatic ketone. And what's our isopropyl? So I'm going to have my benzene ring, my carbonyl carbon double bond to oxygen. My R group in this case is three carbons. And I know there are four bonds to carbon. So that's my product. Ooh, let's do one more, maybe two. And there you go. What would be the product or products of the following reaction? Three points each. And I think everybody's done because I'm getting some people give me the look like, get the work, Dr. White. So I will. All right. What do we have that's different? Ooh, a benzene ring. A benzene ring, but it's attached to a carbonyl with a chlorine. So that's really an acid chloride. And we have aluminum trichloride. And now what do we make? an aromatic ketone. What's my R group? This one, it's a benzene ring. And therefore, what do I make? I have my benzene ring. You see here, don't forget the lines or a circle, carbonyl. And what's my other R group? Another benzene ring. And this is called benzophenone. That's the common name, not the IU back name. Now, as we're going through the semester, now we're getting into the juicy, real good part because you should be asking the question, why am I learning this stuff? And the answer for you is somebody told you you have to take organic chemistry to get into a program or a school. But why are you learning it? Well, benzophenone, what is it used for? Well, with the summer coming, how many of you are gonna go out and worship the sun and so you don't get sun uh, sunburn, you put on suntan lotion, which has a blocker, sun, uh, sun blocker in it, sun a blocker to protect your skin from the harmful UV radiation from the sun. So you don't get things like skin cancer which is not something you want to get. Well, how do they do that? Well, it turns out aromatic ketones, because of all the double bonds in the conjugation, especially like benzophenone, is used in sunscreen. It has the ability to absorb the UV light energy and trap it in the molecule. I'm not going to go how it does that, but it does. Now, for many years, Benzophenone, the molecule you just made, was used in sunscreen and suntan lotion to protect people's skin from UV radiation. Now, a number of years ago, they found an infinitesimal in Europe amount might, might, maybe, maybe, maybe for cause skin cancer. So Europeans are much more aggressive against chemicals like that than Americans. And they said, well, we can't use benzophenone. Well, they found if they put a methyl group on one of the benzene rings, it wasn't even infinitely, infinitely little possible, quote unquote, safer. And now they're using a derivative, something similar to benzophenone, to 
use in sunscreen to absorb that. Now, aromatic ketones like acetophenone, the one you made with a methyl group, right? The guy made it. Those also can absorb UV light. And what they form are certain intermediate that are used for a type of chemistry I'm not teaching you called photochemistry. Photochemistry is when you shine a certain light of a certain frequency on something, it undergoes a chemical reaction. And to initiate that chemical reaction with the light, you need what's called an initiator, something that absorbs that light energy and causes something else to happen. And aromatic ketones are good for that. Now, how many of you are familiar with the nail polish that's been out for a couple of years now, where you put it on your nails, and you can see I do my nails all the time, not, but anyways, and then you put your nails under a special light and it hardens them. In chemistry, we call that, it cures, the, oh, I think somebody uses that. Well, those, that nail polish, by the way, nail polish is serious organic chemistry. So is most of the cosmetics, like your uh, mascara. You know, I'll talk a little about that later on, how they make it waterproof, but that's serious. I mean, very serious. But the ones where you put the, your nails under the light, in the nail polish are aromatic ketones that help initiate the reaction that makes the nail polish cure, get hard. Didn't know that. Now, another place where photochemistry is very important is high-speed printing, like in newspapers or books or things like that, where they put the ink on the paper very quickly and it's got to harden or dry very quickly. There, they also, like your nails, have UV lights that cure the ink, harden it, or make it dry, quote unquote. And there again, you're using aromatic ketones to do that. And the question is, why are you learning this stuff? Well, different reactions I'm teaching you allow organic chemists to make molecules that are used in our everyday life. Example, like if you're curing your nail polish with the light. Isn't that amazing? Let's do one more. This is fun. What two compounds would you react with aluminum trichloride to make this compound? Your turn. See one person gone. I see another one. Another one. I think it's about almost everybody's done. I'll give everybody another 15, 20 seconds while I get some water. This aromatic ketone stuff is thirsty work. All right, let's do it. What's different here? carbonyl and a benzene ring and carbons. What do I have? An aromatic ketone. What's my R group? 
this. What do you react? What do you react with aluminum trichloride to make that? A benzene ring plus an acid chloride. And so therefore, what are my two products here? One of them is a benzene ring. Don't forget to put the lines in a circle there. And the second one is my acid chloride. What's my R group? Four carbons. That's my R group. And then I have the carbonyl and the chlorine. And that's how you make this molecule. And again, that's an aromatic ketone, which has its places. And that's Friedel Crafts alkylation. So when you just put an R group on there, Friedel Crafts alkylation. When you put an acyl group, Friedel Crafts acylation. I'll never ask on test or final what's the name of a reaction, but I still honor the two chemists, Friedel and Crafts, for the great work they did discovering this, inventing this reaction. You know something, this would be a good time to take a break. I'll give you a little longer break. Let's see, why don't you come back at 1.50? I'll give you about a six minute break. We'll go for a while and then, because we're ahead of schedule, which is always a good thing, I'll let you out early so you can start taking test number one. So I'll see you in five minutes at 1.50. Maybe more than five minutes, but I'll see you at one fifty.
I tell you, that's my tax cab whistle I got in high school. <laughs> All right. That's how you make ketones and aldehydes. There are a couple other ways, but that's the main way. And I've used all those to make ketones and aldehydes. My PhD thesis dealt with ketones and aldehydes that I had to make to do research on. So let's continue. Now we get to the fun part. How do you react ketones and aldehydes to make new things? Well, earlier, I had talked about the carbonyl group. And the carbonyl group is carbon double bond to oxygen. And for almost all the reactions, not all of them, but the ones except for one I'll be teaching you, there's some I'm not going to teach you that's at my level, all fun and excitement happens at the carbonyl carbon in reactions of ketones and aldehydes. So this carbon double bond to oxygen was a lot of fun gonna happen. Now this slide, and I believe the next one, will this be on a test? No, I'm gonna turn the switch off, but it helps you understand the chemistry of ketones and aldehydes. Now, if you remember, there's a term you probably learned, hopefully in general chemistry, called when something is electronegative. And that's the ability to pull electrons toward itself. It's like two people standing in a rainstorm sharing an umbrella. If your sister is larger than you, she shares it more over her than you. It's not equal sharing. Don't tell my sister I told that story. But anyways, oxygen and carbon are not equal electronegative compounds or elements. Therefore, in the pi bond, there's slightly more electrons near the oxygen and slightly more less electrons near the carbon. And we show that this is called delta, but it's lowercase in the Greek alphabet. And in chemistry, this is delta, and it's uppercase or capitalized in the Greek alphabet. And this means big difference or difference and this means little difference. Can I write it any smaller? Yes, maybe. But what that means is there's a slight negative charge on the oxygen in a carbonyl of a ketone aldehyde, and there's a slight positive charge, that's why we indicate that, on the carbonyl carbon. And the pi bond is polarized, which is what I'm showing right here. And nucleophilic attack occurs at the carbonyl carbon. Wait a second. What the heck is nucleophilic attack? Let's look at that word. Did I tell you in my class, you're gonna learn some real fancy words that you can impress your friends, neighbors, and loved ones with? Well, sort of. But anyways, file means lover. I'm an audiophile, which means I love music. You see my stereos, I do. And nucleo comes from the nucleus. The nucleus of an atom, oh, that's a positive charge. So nucleophile is something that loves positive charge. And if I'm a nucleophile, And here's a carbonyl. I'm looking for a positive charge. Where do I see one? Right there, slight positive charge. And I'm gonna attack that. Did I tell you organic chemists are bio We don't say bond to it, we say it attacks. 
the carbonyl carbon of the carbonyl group. And most of the reactions I'll be showing you that happens. So nucleophilic addition to carbonyl groups. Nucleophiles, which is a nucleophilic, something that's nucleophilic, attacks the carbonyl group of the carbonyl carbon of the carbonyl group of an aldehyde. The pi bond is broken and a new sigma bond, single bond is formed. And if we had a nucleophile that had a negative charge, this won't be on the test. The arrows show where the electrons are going. It attacks this carbon and this red electron goes, breaks the pi bond and electron goes to the oxygen and notice that has a negative charge. And you've made a new bond here. And that's the type of chemistry ketones and aldehydes undergo. You attack the carbonyl carbon and you form a new bond. Now, another way is if nucleophile, and forget about C board because we're right here, if it's something like H and U, which is really H plus and U minus, this bonds to there, this goes to there, and what you get is something like this. Again, you're dealing with the carbonyl carbon, whatever you're reacting it with, the main part, the nucleophile attacks and bonds to the carbonyl carbon. Can I have everybody's attention, please? Everybody, take a deep breath. Let it out. Take a deep breath. Come on, do it. Relax, let it out. Are you all nice and relaxed? Good. The next four reactions I'm going to show you, and we're not going to get to all of them today. I think I'll only do one or two, and then we'll call it for a day. So you can start on test number one early are some of the more challenging reactions for students. Take a deep breath, relax. But at first glance, these aren't that easy. But they're very important reactions, and I'll explain why. The first two reactions are as how Mother Nature makes all the carbohydrates we have in our world, like the good things, potatoes, rice, french fries, pizza, you know, all the good things in life, carbohydrates. And after that, which we won't get over today, the next two reactions is how your stomach, and not only our stomach, but animal stomach, break down carbohydrates to make them useful for our body. But they're challenging reactions. For those who came back a little late, the next four reactions are pretty uh, challenging at first, but relax with practice, you'll get them. Let's look at them. Now, the first reaction is the formation of hemiacetals and hemiketal. And it's the same for both a ketone or aldehyde. And I'll be using for this chapter, the following convention, which I should have put on the slide, but I didn't, but now I have. This is when R prime is carbon, it's the ketone. When R prime is hydrogen, it's an aldehyde. And you react it with an alcohol plus acid catalyst. And what you form is when R prime is hydrogen, hemiacetal, which I'll never ask you names, hemiacetal or ketal, hemiketal on a test or final, but other classes may. So that's why I'm using them. And when R prime, you start out with a ketone, you get a hemiketal. And this all happens at the carbonyl carbon, which becomes this carbon. And think of it as H and OR, just like I just showed you. H goes to the oxygen, the OR bonds to the carbon, and you break the pi bond between the carbonyl. One thing I didn't mention, I should, I might have, but 
a carbonyl double bond, just like a carbon double bond, to one pi bond or one sigma bond. But carbonyl is different. You can break both the bonds because a carbon oxygen bond, sigma bond, is not the same as a carbon carbon sigma or single bond. That's the world's ugliest looking sigma. That's better. So let's take a look at this reaction. This is the first step Mother Nature uses to make carbohydrates. Can I tell you Mother Nature was the greatest of all organic chemists? All right, let's look at the following. Again, it's a little challenging, but it'll take a little while, but you'll get it. And the question would be, what's the organic product or product the following? So let's take a look at the, what do we have? What's different? Oxygen double bond to carbon with a hydrogen to carbons. And this is an aldehyde. But it could have been also a ketone. When our prime is hydrogen, that's an aldehyde, which is what we have. We can call this our double prime. This R prime. What do we have here? Carbon, carbon, hydroxyl group on a car. Oh, I know what that is. It's an alcohol. And with acid catalyst, what do you get? Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. That's where the fun is. What's attached to it stays attached to it. Okay. Now, this opens up to an alcohol and then an oxygen. And this R group here is on that oxygen. So what's my R group? This. So let's construct what we made. I'm going to put what was the carbonyl carbon first. What's attached to that carbon, our prime, our case is hydrogen, our double prime methyl is still attached to it. Next, it will have this hydroxyl group. Then it will have this oxygen. And the carbon, this hydroxyl group and the alcohol is attached to is the carbon, this oxygen, in my, in this case, hemiacetal is attached to. Now, yes, IUPAC has nomenclature for this. Good news, I'm not gonna teach you that. And that's how you do it. This is getting really sophisticated now. But then again, mother nature is a very sophisticated organic chemist. And let me do one more for you. Again, what's the organic product or products for the following? And if you look at this, what do we have here that's different? What's not carbon? What's not hydro? Ooh, oxygen double bond to carbon. Well, carbon's here and here. That's a ketone. But it could have been an aldehyde, but in this case, it's a ketone. Then what do we react with? Carbon with a hydroxyl group. That's an alcohol. And then acid catalyst. And what do you get? Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it? Our prime or hydrogen. And our double prime is still there. This opens up with a hydroxyl group and then oxygen and R, and that's this carbon here. So what's my R prime, double prime? A methyl. What's my R group? Ethyl, R prime, 
and then what's my R group? Methyl. And now I'll start with this carbon, which becomes this carbon. So I'll put that there. What's attached to it? R prime ethyl, R double prime methyl. It will have this hydroxyl group. We'll have this R group oxygen to that carbon. And then what's my R group on that oxygen? Methyl. And that's how you do it. Again, this is challenging. So if you're having problems at first, relax. You'll get it. Students always do. All right, let me have you try one. And there you go. What would be the organic product or products sort of following? Three points each. I see one person done. Another one. Oh, the votes are coming in. All right, I think everybody's done. Let's take a look at this. What do we have that's different? The first one. Car oxygen to double bond to carbon, carbonyl with a hydrogen that could be R prime or hydrogen. I'll call this R prime. And then carbons here are double prime. We have an aldehyde. What's different here? Carbon, carbon, hydroxyl group. It's an alcohol. And I have acid catalyst, that's H plus. And what do you make? Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it? R prime or H and R double prime is still attached to that carbon. You'll have a hydroxyl group, oxygen, and R. So let's do start to work. Here's my carbonyl carbon. I'm going to do that first. What's attached to it? R prime is hydrogen. R double prime is n propyl. Remember, there's four bonds to carbon always. Then I'll have my hydroxyl group. Then oxygen here. What's my R group? Ethyl. And there you made it. In this case, we made a hemiacetal. Hemi means half. And you'll, I don't know if we'll get to it today or not. Now, Oh, let's do one more. And there's the one more.
All right, anybody need more time? Nope, I don't hear anybody yelling. So let's do this. Ooh, what's this? What's different? Oxygen, double bond to carbon in the ring. I have carbons here and here. And what is that? It's a ketone. This so happens R and R prime are connected in the ring. Now this could have been a hydrogen too, but it's not. And then I have carbon, 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 hydrox. Oh, it's an alcohol. And I have acid H plus catalyst. And what do I get? Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. This carbon, what's ever attached to it, is still attached to it. Then you'll get a hydroxyl group, then oxygen, then the R group from the alcohol. So this carbon right here is this carbon right here, which becomes this carbon right here. So it's attached to it, stays attached to it. So I still have my ring. Then on this carbon, I'll have my hydroxyl group and I'll have this oxygen and what's my R group and propyl, the carbon with the hydroxyl group is the carbon attached to the oxygen here. And that's how you do it. Now, good news for you, the Supreme Court of the United States has still outlawed cruel and unusual punishments of students. So that means this reaction, the three afterward that we won't get to today, I will never on test or a final do synthesis problems. They're quite exciting to do, but it's cruel, unusual punishment to students. And I don't do that because it's against the law. And also, I don't do that because of my golden rule students uh, teaching. I don't do my students what I didn't like done to me. But in this case, it even goes beyond that. And that's how you do that first of the four challenging reactions. Now, if I look at the clock and I also looked at the syllabus, we are ahead of ourselves even with the July 5th holiday because I stuck away a lot of time from the couple labs we've already had. With that, I'm gonna call it a day. You have a couple of questions about anything, including test number one. I'll stick around now and answer them. Other than that, once I log off here in about 10 minutes, I'll send out the email with the password for test number one. It's all lowercase and every hour or two, every two hours, I'll be checking my email. And if you have a problem, email me. And worst comes to worst, I can even set up a Zoom meeting if you have that kind of problem. With that, I'm gonna say, gang the sun. I'll see you on Monday on by Sunday, 1 p.m. Realistically, I'm looking at sometimes Saturday afternoon. I hope to be finished. So, uh, to get the grades out for test number one to you. Next Monday, I will be going through test number one at answers in our Zoom meeting. If you can't make it, I will help you during my office hours and go through it. With that, gang is in. Have a nice rest of the week. Good luck on test number one. Hopefully you won't need luck. And with that, bye.